hi lovelies welcome back to my channel but if you are new here hi my name is taylor thank you so much for joining me yes this is the face to the voice i've never done a face intro for you guys so i'm trying something new tell me if you like it in the comment section down below today i'll be creating an acrylic ombre nail tutorial and i did want to share this with you guys now i struggled a little bit in today's video just a bit i have not touched acrylic for approximately about three weeks so therefore that is the reason for that but i decided to post it and share it with you guys anyway because i did love how the design turned out and i did struggle with the design as well it took me a few days to figure out what i wanted to create after doing the ombre however we are not human oh, we are not humans what are we then <laughs> always remember we are not perfect we have good days and bad days always you know what we're human we're entitled to do that okay just remember that however if you are interested in today's video then let's go So we are getting right into today's video and i'm starting with a pre-prepped practice hand if you guys are interested in seeing how i do that then go ahead and check out my previous upload and i will also attach it to my end screen i do walk you through step by step and show you exactly how i would go ahead and prep my practice hand before any application but of course if you're recreating this design in any way form or fashion on your natural nails definitely make sure that your natural nails are properly prepped I did start off with a medium sized bead of acrylic right behind where the extension and the natural nail would meet. I did make sure that it was even from side to side. I also made sure there's no product falling off of the nail and I did lightly pat that acrylic and pull it at the same time while working it closer to the free edge of the extension or as close as possible. Because we are working on 2XL nails today and I did not cut them down, all I did was take my hand file and square off the free edge of the extension. So I am working with small and medium sized beads of acrylic in order to cover the entire nail tip. Now right where the extension and the natural nail would meet, I did take a small bead of acrylic, a small and wet bead because you don't want that area to be too thick because that is where your ombre is actually going to start. Now, I do like my nails more on the thinner side, but the acrylic application at the tip of this nail was just a little bit too thin for me. So that is why I'm going back in with another bead of acrylic and I'm going to coat over what we just did. But I'm not going as far back as to the last bead that I placed, which is actually where the natural nail and the extension would meet. I am leaving that area nice and thin and I'm focusing mainly on the nail tip. Now, I did mess up my acrylic application by trying to maintain the shape of the extension to reduce my filing and by doing that I created a sink in my nail shape so I just went in with a smaller bead of that blue and I just covered that and filled it in made sure that my sidewalls of the extension are nice and clean and then I just went ahead and started working with that nude acrylic powder so I'm placing that bead of acrylic right where the natural nail and the extension would meet make sure that it's even from side to side and then I take my brush nice and flat and I go behind that bead and start pulling the acrylic as if I'm about to wipe it off but I'm not wiping it off what I'm doing is actually creating the blend between the nude and that blue now I do like working with my acrylic beads a little bit wetter than usual especially when I'm doing ombre nails because it does make the blending of the two acrylic powders nice and smooth and I'm just going to continue working that nude all the way up to the cuticle area one small to medium sized bead at a time and I'm doing it the same way I'm placing down the nude making sure that it's even on both sides and then I take my brush nice and flat and I start pulling the acrylic as far up to the previous bead that we laid down now what you're doing is like the wiping effect is actually creating layers of that transition so the first bead that I laid down was the start of my ombre and that is actually going to be the most faded part of the ombre and then it's just going to give you that nice faded effect all the way up to the cuticle area which is going to be nice and opaque 
Now if it is that I have any product that would have spilled over onto the cuticle, I make sure that the bristles of my brush are nice and flat and then I take my brush at a 90 degree angle behind that cuticle bead and make a C shape on both sides of the cuticle area. This is going to help to seal that acrylic and I also use this motion to remove any product that would have spilled onto the skin. You definitely want to go ahead and remove that as soon as possible. Because that acrylic is wet, it's easy to be removed. So therefore you want to go ahead and remove it before it starts to set. This is going to be a very repetitive design because I am creating the ombre on all the nails. As spring is in the air, this is going to be the base for my spring inspired nail art design. Design. for you guys it's spring for us it's more like the upcoming Easter season so everything pastel flowers butterflies you know the cute nail designs I think this is my favorite time of the year to create nails because I love pastel colors so I actually forgot to tell you guys the products that I'm using in today's video at the beginning so I'm finally trying all the not polish acrylic powders yes i know finally it's about that time if you caught the swatch video this was not in the swatches i actually had this in my stash from purchasing one of their mystery boxes a few years ago this one is called pool party this gorgeous blue that you see on screen and the nude is actually called nude panther now i am laying my acrylic with my Kara sky number 12 acrylic brush and i am also using the Kara sky acrylic monomer i did mention in my swatch video that the acrylic monomer from not polish is just a little bit too strong for me so therefore i prefer to use the Kara sky one because the odor is like a little less So again, I am taking a medium sized bead of acrylic and I'm starting with that gorgeous baby blue and in this case, I did place it where the extension and the free edge meet. I blended out that area there because I still need it to be nice and thin and then I started patting and pulling the acrylic as far down to the free edge of the nail tip as possible. Now when I reach as far as the acrylic could go, I do start blending it out to make it easier for the bead that I just placed on the nail to blend back into that previous bead of acrylic now one thing i noticed when working with these acrylic powders is that they do blend easily and they also give you enough time to manipulate the products into the placement that you wanted so i did go in with another medium sized bead closer to the free edge of the nail tip i blended it up into the previous bead that i just started pulling to the free edge of the nail extension and then i started working that bead from side to side pulling it down to the free edge of the nail tip if i have any extra product i'm going to just use Use my brush and remove that making sure to keep the side walls of the nail tip nice and sharp so that way i could sort of eliminate the amount of filing that i have to do in the end and also using my brush to square off the free edge of the nail tip So 
so where I placed the two beads of acrylic, there was a dip in my application so i just went in with a medium sized bead i blended it up towards the cuticle area and then down towards the free edge of the nail tip removing any extra product and again making sure that my side walls are nice and sharp to help to maintain my nail shape now i am taking nude panta and i'm placing it right where the free edge and the natural nail meet i'm making sure that that bead is as even as possible from side to side and then i'm taking my brush nice and flat and i'm going to start pulling it up towards the free edge of the nail tip now one thing i forgot to mention when i was explaining this before is that you want to make sure that whatever color you choose in this case my blue is a little bit dried it has started to set before you start working with that cuticle color if you go in while that tip color is still wet then it is going to start to move when you create that wiping motion and everything is just going to be a hot hot mess and you do not want that you want the amount of work that you put into laying the acrylic on the tip to stay where it is so my recommendation would be if you're working with a full ombre set go ahead and do all the tip colors first and then come back to do the cuticle area the reason why i'm doing it like this is because at the start of this video i had zero clues as to what i was about to create then i decided i'll just do a full ombre set and go on top of that with my nail art now i'm giving you guys pointers as to how i create an acrylic ombre so therefore you don't have to do it the exact same way that i do it but take whatever pointers you can from today's video and find a way that you're comfortable with creating your ombre every ombre nail tutorial is going to be different because that person has found their comfortable way in creating an ombre so you do the same thing go ahead and take all the pointers you need from every single video that you watch and create a technique that works best for you i know there are many different ways to create an ombre nail in this instant i know there are some people that can get this done in like two beads i am not one of those people I do work with multiple beads because I find myself having more control over my acrylic products when I work this way and it helps me to achieve that nice smooth acrylic application that I prefer however this is a personal preference and this is what I'm comfortable with and I find this process works best for me Now that my ombre nails are complete, I am taking the not polished clear acrylic powder and I'm taking a medium sized bead and I'm placing it right where the two colors ombre together. Now because I did work on the tip of the nail by thickening it up just a little bit and I did focus on the cuticle area by sort of building it up, I don't have to go ahead and do much encapsulating by building up the structure of this nail. My main focus is to protect the ombre. Now I do blend the excess clear up into the blue and if I feel like I need a little bit more strength at the tip of the nail, I'm going to add a small bead of clear acrylic there as well. Encapsulating your ombres is definitely a must. You don't want to go in and file these nails as is because all the work that you put into creating that nice smooth transition is going to be filed away another thing that encapsulating your ombre does is that it smoothens out the transition even more between the two acrylic powders so therefore you get that nice flawless ombre look Running from palm to clump like bloodhounds From 
All right, so now that it's time to file, you want to tap those nails to make sure that you hear this tapping sound. But if you don't, you need to leave those nails to set up a little bit more before you start to file. So I am taking my Kira Sky 100 100 grit hand file and I'm going to start by sharpening up the free edge and the sidewalls of the nail extension. I do try my best to make sure that I file evenly on both sides and what works for me personally is actually counting each time I file on one side and repeat the same thing on the opposite side. This keeps the nails nice and even. So if you're having problems making sure that your nail shape stays nice and centered, for example, if I file three times on one side and I actually count it, guys, I do count it in my head, then I go in and file three times on the opposite side and I just continuously repeat that from side to side. So if you see me going in on one side, I'm actually counting the amount of times that I file on that particular side and then I go ahead and repeat it again on the opposite side. So sometimes no matter what you do, you do get spillage of the acrylic underneath that nail tip. So therefore it does leave it nice, well not nice, but it does leave it rough. <laughs> I always pass my hands underneath the nail to make sure that it is nice and smooth. If it is not, I will take my hand file nice and flat underneath that nail tip and I will file that smooth and then work my file at a 90 degree angle up to the side walls. You do not want to have a nice crisp nail shape and then you pass your hand underneath that nail and it is rough but this is necessary just as you want your application to be smooth and that shape to be crisp underneath that nail needs to be smooth as well and sometimes we don't realize that underneath that nail is rough until we pass our hands now i'm taking my kara sky medium grit five in one carbide bit this is their silver one as well as their beyond pro rechargeable e-file and i'm going to be using this bit to seal in my cuticle area even more as well as work that bit over the surface of the nail in a vertical direction to remove any imperfections in my acrylic application one thing that I've always done when I'm filing the nail surface is I pass my hand over that nail to see if there's any dips or dents in my acrylic application. You are going to feel the imperfections on the nail surface and this is also going to indicate where you need to focus on filing. So what I find myself doing lately is taking a fine sanding band and working with my e-file at above 5000 RPMs and this is what I'm going to use to buff over the surface of this nail. I find myself doing this because it's a lot less pressure on my wrist and I try to use my e-file as much as possible to reduce any joint pains or anything like that. So what my sanding band is doing is acting as my buffer by removing the excess scratches from my carbide bit. Because I know I'm going to be doing nail art i'm starting off with a matte base so this is also going to give my matte gel top coat a surface to adhere to once you're happy with your finished filing you do want to turn the hand around and look at it from your client's point of view now i didn't show it in today's video i did it off camera and this is what my application looks like i did go ahead and wash my silicone hand because all that dust you saw does collect on the hand now i'm taking the not polished matte it and i'm going to be applying this to all the nails i am removing any excess gel along the side wall this is going to help to maintain the shape of these nails once I'm finished with that I am going to pop the entire hand into my beyond pro rechargeable LED light and I'm going to cure it for a full 60 seconds <laughs>
So I've been obsessed with this nail trend on Instagram where you create this V-cut French over an ombre nail. So I am going to be doing that on the pinky and the index finger of this design. And this blue gel polish that I'm using is also by Not Polish. This is the color M91. And I'm using this to create my V-cut. I'm also using my long striper brush from the Veronique's shop. Now, this is the first time I'm using this gel color by Not Polish and I did find their consistency a little bit thinner than what I'm accustomed to using. So in order for me to get it nice and opaque, I did apply two coats of this blue But I only showed you guys me doing one coat on camera because it's just me repeating the same thing that I'm doing now on screen Now I do use my flash kill light and I flash kill these nails in between each coat Once the both nails are finished, I'm going to take it and pop it into my Beyond Pro Rechargeable LED light And I do give it a full kill for 60 seconds <laughs> Now that these two nails have finished cured, I'm taking the Not Polish Matted once again and I'm going to go ahead and top coat these nails, remove any excess product to continue maintaining my nail shape as much as possible. Because I am working with multiple layers of gel polish, I want to make sure that any excess gel is removed and then I'm going to give it another cure for 30 seconds. At this point, I don't like how my lines of my V-cut are looking. They're not as crisp as I would like them to be. So now I'm taking that same striper brush and I'm taking this Madame Glam gel polish. It's called Thoughtful Blue and I'm going to be outlining that V-cut. Now this is going to help to crisp up that line and it's also going to help me to be able to straighten the lines so they look nice and clean. And on top of that wet gel, I'm going to be using this really pretty iridescent fine glitter, which kind of reminds me of those flash gels that are also trending now i don't remember where i got this from because i found it in my stash now can you tell that i went cleaning my nail area yes i did i went digging and i well i didn't go digging but i went cleaning and i found them and i was so happy that i did because this glitter matched perfectly with this set and i absolutely love it now if i can find a similar one or the identical thing i will link it in my description box below but i did make sure to properly coat over that wet gel with the glitter and then i popped it into the light and i cured that once I took it out of the light, I used my dust brush to remove any excess glitter off of the nail and I absolutely love how it looks right now like ah. Now this design I will tell you guys was definitely a trust the process type of design and in order to complete this entire design because I had no idea I didn't go in with a plan or anything like that so therefore it did take me a while to complete this design 
but I was getting so frustrated, y'all. Like, I was at a point where it was just like, you know what, forget it, I'll scrap it and start it over. But I do like to challenge myself. So in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, I've gotten this far. Let me just sit with my practice hand, listen to some music, get in a zone and just see what I can create. And I was really happy that I trusted the process in this case. So if it is that you're ever in the middle of a set and you start to feel frustrated and like you're ready to give up, just take a breath, listen to something that you enjoy listening to. If it's music, a podcast, a book, and just listen to that while you are creating, it does get you into a zone and your creative juices just start flowing. So let's go ahead and move along to the nail art part of today's video. Taking the same blue gel polish by Not Polish, I am using just the back of my brush to create the center of my flower. With my Madame Glam's Detail Liner Brush and their white gel paint, I'm going to be using this to create my flower pattern and today I decided to do some daisies keeping it really cute simple but still trendy so it's easy for you guys to recreate beginner or advanced and if you recreate this design share it with me on my Instagram at the glamorous nails I will have the link in my description box I do love seeing how you guys recreate my videos how you recreate my set put your own twist on it and I do share all of your recreations on my IG stories now to create my flower petals you're going to see me doing it two ways but either way it is really easy so first I take up a dollop of that gel paint at the tip of my brush and I place it where I want my flower petals to stop. Now this is where you'll determine how long you actually want your flower petals to be. Then I take my brush and I pull that paint to a point close to the center of my flower. Then I go back to the top of my petals and I create two curves from the top to round it off and then bring it back to the point to the center. And I do repeat that on both sides. Now I know it sounds complicated but trust me it's not. Now you're also going to see me starting closer to the center of my flower. Create a V and then I round out that edge where I want my flower petals to stop and next I'm going to fill in that petal so these are the two ways that I'm going to be doing it I am using this gel paint directly on top of the mat because it doesn't have a tacky layer and it does remain glossy and I do want that glossy and matte contrast with these flowers therefore I'm not going to be adding any top coat over my nail art however once I'm finished doing the flowers on this nail I am going to flash cure it for about 15 seconds Ryan <laughs> I did try to add a little butterfly on this nail because I did post a poll on Instagram as well as on my community tab on YouTube but on YouTube I think butterflies won but on Instagram I believe flowers won or is it the other way around? I'm not really sure how it went but hubby did suggest that I put both on the nail so I decided to put this blue butterfly on just because it went so well with this design and after I applied the butterfly I'm just going in and randomly placing some crystals in between my daisies and at the cuticle area of this nail I am going to go ahead and repeat this design on the middle finger as well now the reason why you're going to see my end clip and my thumbnail without the butterfly is because I recorded this video at night so when I went to bed everything seemed fine but when i got up the next morning to do my final clip y'all will not believe the freaking tip of the nail was looking discolored honestly i was trying to figure out why i started with the matte first assess but then all the nails that i used the matte on stayed blue the only two nails that were discolored were the two nails with the butterflies so then i figured it had to be the freaking foil gel at this point i was over it i wanted to say a few choice words trust me because it was so frustrating and let me tell you in that moment it felt like everything that could have gone wrong with this set just did but thankfully it really wasn't that dramatic 
I'm telling you, like in that moment it was. But I still wanted to include the butterfly clip to show you guys two different variations to the same design. Go ahead and comment down below and tell me if you'll rock this set with or without the butterfly. And if you've stuck with me up until this point, go ahead and add a blue butterfly with your comments as well since we had to say RIP to the butterfly for now. But don't worry, I do have a butterfly set in mind that I'll be creating for you guys next. So stay tuned for that. Make sure that your notifications are turned on that way you won't miss it. I used to take myself out on dates Open my own damn doors, pay for everything on my plate Sometimes I'd even get the steak Cause I got it like that, always had my own bag Never needed no man to rely on Got two good shoulders to cry on I was alright on my own Till I fell, but it wasn't fake And I couldn't tell at the time But I was my own soulmate It's like I forgot I was fine Let you treat me any kind of way Now I'm free, you gotta celebrate you couldn't see everything and stay that that i wasn't afraid to say yeah if i gotta choose me i won't be afraid to if i gotta choose me i gotta do what i gotta do when i love you i lose me now i can't be attached to you no more i like me better when i wasn't yours i'm going back i'm going back i'm going back i'm going i'm going back i'm going i'm going back to who i was before I like me better, I like me better, I like me better, yeah, yeah. I like me better, I like me, I like me better when I was yours. After placing my crystals on this nail, I did take the entire set and pop it into my light and give it a final kill for 60 seconds. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you were able to learn something new from my techniques. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I realize a lot of you guys do watch my videos, but you don't click on that thumbs up. So go ahead and take two seconds right now and give this video a big thumbs up as it really does help my channel and I truly appreciate it. As well as click on that subscribe button if you haven't done so just yet that is it for me thank you guys so much for watching today's nail tutorial i will have a clip of the final result coming up at the end of the video to share with you guys i do hope you're having an amazing day or night and i'll see you in the next one but all i gotta say back is if i gotta choose me i won't be afraid to if i gotta choose me i gotta do what i gotta do when i love you i lose me now i can't be attached to you